As many of you know, Bluey is easily one of my favorite shows, and while I could talk about how great it is all day, to summarize, it has an amazing roster of characters, hilarious stories, and an insanely talented crew of animators, composers, and voice actors that bring the show to life. And while it's often categorized as just a kid's show, Bluey is one of those rare shows that not only entertains kids, but adults as well, with its relatable characters and stories for the adults, but funny moments and games for the younger ones. And while it's amazing to see something that all ages can enjoy, we unfortunately don't live in a perfect world. And for every great family or kids show, we get a billion that are just not cutting it. Case in point... Yep, we're going there. So to be honest, I was really, really, really dreading this video. I mean, it's not like Peppa is physically torturing me, but for obvious reasons, I've never had any interest in watching this show. In fact, despite it being more than 15 years old, I haven't seen or even heard of this show until recently, and have never watched a single episode in my life. So with that said, why am I putting myself through this? Well, one thing people like to say a lot about Bluey is that it's essentially Peppa, but better in literally every way possible. And not only is it fun to compare the two shows, but an interesting one as well, as the creator of Bluey has reportedly seen Peppa before, and basically wanted to make his own version of it. Also, the premises of both shows are actually quite similar in concept, with both being about families in everyday situations. And while they do seem similar at first, one is significantly more beloved than the other. And while it's obvious to see why, I felt like it was time for someone to make a review comparing the two, and seeing how they actually do better or worse than the other. And of course, that person is hopefully gonna be me. However, while that sounds like a great idea, I've seen literally every episode of Bluey, but zero Peppa episodes, which would obviously be unfair. So as a result, I've decided that in this video, I'll be taking a look at a few Peppa episodes to get a better understanding of the show, and come to my own conclusions about its quality, or dare I say lack thereof. And while I could watch every single episode, that would take forever. So for now, I've just chosen a few different ones, most of which are the earlier episodes, but also some newer ones to spice things up. So without a further ado, it's time to look into some Peppa episodes. I can't wait. Alright, so before we even begin, is no one going to mention that the Bluey intro is just a Peppa intro in reverse? with the characters being removed as opposed to being introduced. But anyways, for our first episode, we have the classic known as Muddy Puddles, which is actually the first episode of the entire show. So if there's any episode that should give us a proper introduction, it's this one. And yeah, it does represent Peppa pretty accurately, but for all the wrong reasons. To start, the story is as about as shallow as an actual puddle. Basically, Peppa and George are sad because it's raining outside. But then, it just stops raining. So good for them? And after that, the two decide to jump in some puddles. But oh no! Peppa splashes George by accident! I wonder what's gonna happen. <laughs> yep. We're only 2 minutes and 30 seconds into this entire show, and George is already crying. Brilliant. But after that, the two immediately get along, and they splash in more puddles. I would say more, but that's basically it. So right off the bat, one huge aspect about this episode, and the show in general, is how everything is very simple, which can be seen by the plot. And while it does try to make itself easy to understand, it comes at the cost of the pacing, as everything is relatively slow and super laid out, 
which can get boring pretty fast. And since it is the very first episode, I'm not going to criticize the animation that much, as most shows tend to be a bit rough in their first season. But even with that against it, I still have to mention that the animation, in general, leaves a lot to be desired. From the janky movements to the imperfect scribbles all over the backgrounds, the style of this show is definitely one that takes some getting used to. Or maybe it's just ugly, I don't know. So overall, for a first episode, it's far from great, but for what it is, it's relatively harmless, so I don't hold anything against it. And since it is the series premiere, we still have a long way to go, so let's hope things get better from here. So in this episode, Peppa and George want to jump in muddy puddles again, but unfortunately, the puddles dried up. Thank the lord, I was getting bored. So instead, they choose to play in the pool. But before we can do anything remotely fun, we have to watch them slowly get ready. And after they put on their swimming costumes, we have to watch them put on sunscreen. And while that doesn't sound too bad, it was a lot worse than anything I could have ever imagined. First off, they constantly call it cream. It's completely white, which is fine because it's sunscreen. But whenever they use it, it makes a very loud, sticky sound that is just a bit too much for me. And it's kind of disturbing. <laughs> Also, I should mention that they couldn't be bothered to add any music, so those sounds are literally the only thing you hear throughout this entire scene. But after that ASMR session, they finally get the pool ready. And now they're having ice cream? Wait, what? Okay, so after using half of the episode to prepare it, the kids are already done with the pool for now. And apparently, that's because they now want ice cream. How do I know this? Not because they literally show it, but because two characters mention it a total of three times, followed by the narrator announcing it a fourth time. And as many of you already know, this right here is a great example of one of the biggest complaints about the show in general, as it constantly feels the need to state the obvious, often multiple times as seen here. And while I do understand that they're simply trying to make the story more understandable, in the end, it also breaks the pacing and slows everything down even further. And not to mention that when this occurs, it just feels like they're talking down to the audience, as so much is pointed out and hammered in your face without even giving a chance for the kids watching to think. But anyways, the kids of course want some ice cream, so Peppa happily gets a cone, and then George asks for a dinosaur ice lolly. And what do you know, Miss Rabbit just happens to have a dinosaur ice lolly. Oh dear. But don't worry, Mummy Pig is here to save the day. And she makes George happy by giving him Daddy Pig's ice cream. And while that sounds nice, there are a few problems with the way this is handled. And I know this is gonna sound a little crazy, but the best way to explain this is to compare it with Bluey, as that show actually has a similar scenario. In the Bluey episode Ice Cream, Bluey and her sister also get treats, but wait too long until it melts, causing them to become sad, but cheer up when their dad offers his. And while many argue that Bluey and her sister Bingo were still brats in this episode, in the end, at least Bluey's dad offered his ice cream, rather than just having it get taken away. And unlike Peppa, Bluey shows that the characters learn from their mistakes, giving the conflict a purpose and possibly teaching the kids watching. However, the Peppa episode basically skips over all of this, and Daddy is just left without an ice cream or an explanation. And as if that wasn't enough, they later dunk all of the pool water on him, and then the kids play in puddles. Again. So yeah, I would say that overall, this was better than Muddy Puddles, as we did get to see more interesting stuff happen. 
And while it's a slight improvement, the story is still relatively bland as it doesn't really go anywhere, and I can see how the repetition of obvious stuff quickly gets tiresome. And as many others have pointed out, they really missed an opportunity to have some great character growth or a decent message, but instantly threw it to the side, which I think is kind of a disappointment. But to be fair, it's still Peppa though, so I can't say I was that disappointed. But I suppose it could have easily been better. Mr. Skinny Legs. <laughs> so remember how I mentioned that Peppa could have easily included more messages and plot points to make the show more interesting? Well, lucky for us, it turns out that this upcoming episode has exactly that. And everyone hated it. So to summarize, Peppa and George are playing with dolls together, and what I mean by playing with dolls together is that Peppa is basically treating George like her minion, forcing him to play her way, and her way only. And while it's kind of annoying, it thankfully doesn't last too long, because in the bathroom, George finds a gigantic spider. And despite the fact that it's a gigantic spider with human teeth, George is actually quite amused by it. Which confuses me because wasn't this kid just crying about a little mud in a previous episode? How does he find this amusing of all things? But regardless, George decides to show Peppa, who understandably freaks out, but instantly accepts him a minute later, with almost no explanation as to why. And eventually, the whole family just accepts it, pretending to have a tea party with the spider, and then the episode ends there basically. Jeez, where to even start? Well, to be fair, the characters weren't too annoying in this episode, as Peppa was a bit bossy, but it only lasted for a short time. And even though I'm thankful George didn't cry for once, the fact that he's completely okay with the spider is kind of weird, considering how he gets scared of basically everything. And speaking of that spider, let's talk about Mr. Skinny Legs himself. So, to be honest, I'll give them points for trying to portray an interesting message, but the way they handled it was poor to say the least. I mean, I think they were trying to make the spider extra cute so we sympathize with it, but in the end, it still looks creepy. Especially with those human teeth, I just cannot get over that, I'm sorry. And of course, it neglects the fact that some spiders can actually be harmful and that playing with them is probably not a good idea, which is why the episode was pulled from airing in Australia, until it came back and had to be pulled again. So yeah, props to them for trying to convey some sort of message, but they handled it really poorly, and overall, this episode is just bizarre. And while on the subject of spiders, I also watched the episode Spiderweb, which is essentially a sequel to Mr. Skinny Legs. And to be honest, I suppose it's an improvement because they don't encourage kids to play with spiders. But overall, I would consider Spiderweb to be a decent episode as it's not too terrible. And the only thing that's technically bad is Daddy Pig's obsession with cobwebs might be dangerous. But it does kind of come back to bite him, which I'll admit was kind of funny. So it's better, but not by much. The Coral As many of you know, one of the worst aspects about Peppa Pig is Peppa herself, as she has a tendency to act bossy and quite rude. And while she hasn't been that bad so far, this episode is something else. To start, Peppa and her friend Susie are playing a game. But oh no! Peppa loses, so she immediately accuses her friend of cheating. And of course, Susie denies it, but Peppa still insists. So Susie still denies it, and then Peppa basically tells her to shove it and get out. However, despite her bad attitude, Peppa begins to regret what she did. So she calls her friend later, and basically says sorry, not sorry, and rightfully annoyed, Susie basically tells her to shove it. And if I'm gonna be honest, this scene is so ridiculous, part of me wants to hate it, 
but the delivery gave me a pretty good laugh just because of how chaotic it is. But of course, the two instantly become best friends again. Because they argue over the same stuff? I'm pretty sure that wasn't the point, but whatever works for them, I suppose. And that right there was basically the quarrel. And to be honest, some parts such as the scene with Peppa on the phone were pretty funny, but other than that, Peppa's bossy nature can be painful to watch. And the episode is basically one of those two characters separate but unite stories that has been done so much without really adding anything new. So yeah, pretty forgettable episode, but it did give me a laugh from its ridiculousness. So credit where credit is due. Long train journey. I'm gonna be honest. This one is from a later season, so we're kind of skipping a little bit. And the only reason I chose this episode is because I like trains. And maybe it's because of that, but to be honest, this episode actually wasn't bad. I mean, just like most of the Peppa episodes, this one is really short, but it uses the time relatively well so things don't get boring. In fact, the only real complaint I got about this episode is that sometimes it feels like it's going too fast. But to summarize, Daddy Pig has to go review concrete in a faraway land, because in this universe, everyone thinks he's like the Gordon Ramsay of concrete or something. But because of how far away his clients are, he has to take the train. And of course, Peppa randomly decides that she wants to go, starting the plot of the entire episode. And from there, they board the train, some shenanigans happen, they arrive at their stop, and that's literally the entire episode. So for what it is, I would say that to an extent, this episode was actually decent. The concept was interesting, the story was short but fun, and Peppa wasn't a brat, even though she barely did anything anyways. I mean, honestly, this whole episode could have just been about Daddy Pig, which would have been pretty interesting, but overall, this is better than anything I expected to come out of Peppa Pig. And I know that's not saying much considering my standards were basically at zero, but gotta give them credit for improving. You know what? I'm gonna be honest. I'm actually having some fun reviewing these episodes, whether they're decent or laughably bad. However, I'm sure the video is already getting a bit long, so for now, I got one more episode before we wrap things up. Okay, well it's actually four episodes, but they kind of all go together. So I'm counting it as just one special if that makes sense. And of course, we have what I'm calling the American special, where Peppa and her family take a trip to the United States, which in itself is a pretty interesting concept. So right off the bat, Mr. Potato is making a new movie in Hollywood and he's giving one lucky family a special trip to the United States. But in order to earn it, they must find the golden ticket, Willy Wonka style. And for anyone who's confused, I should clarify that Mr. Potato is in fact a giant sentient potato, alongside other sentient vegetables. How that works is beyond me, but apparently the show doesn't know either, because in literally the next scene, we see Mummy Pig chopping up a potato. You know what? It's probably better if I don't question this. So, moving on. Mummy Pig is preparing dinner, and Peppa asks if they can find the golden ticket. And what do you know? They just happen to come across it. How convenient. So right away, they fly off to America and end up in New York City. But at this point, you might be wondering, Wait, weren't they supposed to go to Hollywood? And you'd be absolutely right, because shortly after, they hit the road and travel across the nation, exploring new places and having all sorts of good old American fun, like driving monster trucks, doing country dances, and floating down a crazy river rapid. But of course, they eventually make it to Hollywood, where they help out Mr. Potato and the day is saved. And I know this is gonna sound a little crazy, but I actually enjoyed this special, or set of episodes I should say. 
And even though Peppa doesn't have the nicest animation style, the scenes such as the ones in New York and the desert are simple, but detailed in texture and have things like extra layers and even some shading, which makes the otherwise flat scenery come to life. And unlike before, I've noticed that there was a lot more music, which really helps in setting the tone and keeping things interesting. Also, the humor in this episode gave me a few chuckles, such as the running gag where there's a Miss Rabbit in literally every town they visit. But outside of those nice things, the story itself is... Okay, there's honestly not much to it, and everything just kind of happens with little meaning. But for what it was, it was serviceable, and the characters weren't dislikable. Although, you can argue that there really isn't much to like or hate them for anyways, because of how shallow and basic they are. So to my surprise, this multi-parter was actually decent for what it was, and a huge improvement over what we saw at first. And I am so glad that these were the episodes I chose to end the video on, because after everything we've seen, it's good to know that the show is trying to fix its mistakes and improve. Well, that was an interesting experience. We saw a lot of bad, a lot of weird, but some good too. And as a person who's barely heard of anything positive out of this show, I was pleasantly surprised by some of the better episodes. So with what I saw, what do I think? Well, it started out a bit rough, but overall, I would consider Peppa a relatively harmless show as the characters aren't the strongest, and they can be annoying, but they do provide some fun moments, and there's only a couple times where I genuinely dislike them. And I have to give them props for trying to teach good morals to audiences, even if said morals aren't always executed in the best way. So if you're someone like me who isn't a young child, I personally wouldn't recommend this show completely, because I just don't think it's as stimulating or interesting as something like Bluey. But if you're curious about it, there's not much to hesitate about as it's relatively easy to watch and not as annoying as I initially believed. But if you're a parent who wants to watch this show with their kids, I would say that it's a relatively appropriate show, as it is made for younger kids, but that it could give some kids the wrong impression, although it's not something that happens constantly. But with that said, out of hundreds of episodes, I only reviewed a small handful. So I can't say that I'm some sort of expert on this show. But if there's any more episodes I should check out, feel free to let me know. And of course, regarding how it compares to Bluey, I still think that show is superior on basically every front. But I will admit that despite having similar concepts, both shows have their own executions and styles that provide different experiences, which I think is important to understand. And as I mentioned before, I do plan on making a full video comparing the two in the near future, as I think it would still be an interesting idea to look into. But until then, that is my first experience with the hit show Peppa Pig. And even though I thought it was actually okay, I know there's a lot of people who both greatly enjoy and love this show, so I'm curious to know your take on it as well. But until next time, BNB Productions will be signing out. Have a great day everyone, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you real soon.